Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please click on like and subscribe. If you've been here before, welcome back. Today I'm going to go over the 6290W keypad. Here's what the following buttons do. So the top here is the settings gear. That's your system info, system setup, Wi-Fi setup, display, and audio settings. You can turn your brightness up and down from here and you can turn your volume up and down from here. To get back out of here, you either hit the back arrow or the home key. Anytime you get somewhere on this keypad, if you hit something by mistake and you don't know what to do, don't panic, just hit the home key. It'll always take you back to the front page again. Now the second button down on the left, um, this has a memory card slot on the side. So it's an SD memory card. It does not come with the memory card. You have to put your own memory card in here. And it will only support up to a 16 gig memory card. So if you try to put something bigger like this 128 in there, it'll boot out and it won't let you put it in there. What this does is it pulls up multimedia files your files have to be saved as PNG files also, which makes it even more complicated. Again, I'm not sure why Honeywell put this on there, but this is what it does. So when you click on that, if you've got your family photos saved in here, on this little memory card, you can hit the play button, and basically it'll do a little screensaver of your family photos scrolling throughout. That way you're not looking at the basic Honeywell page. But as soon as you click on it, you still have to hit the home key to get back to do any of your other features on here. Bottom left-hand side, there's an exclamation in a triangle with a circle around it. That's not to be confused with the exclamation with the circle around it. Now again, this is another feature Honeywell did. I'm not sure why they did it because it's kind of confusing. The left one is your panic button. So you have to press that and then to set off the alarm, you would push and hold the button. Now depending on how your installer has it set up, you may have a silent panic, you may have an audible panic. You can set this up different ways depending on how it's set up in your house, but you would just push the according or the appropriate button, press and hold, and it would set off the alarm. You can't just tap it. You have to press and actually hold it down for it to go off so you don't care about someone accidentally. Like if a kid gets in there and starts pushing buttons, it's not going to mess anything up. Again, the back arrow or the home key. Starting on the top right hand side, you've got these little windows. If you click on the little windows, this takes you up to a multi-partition. Now a multi-partition, most people don't have this in your regular home. This is more of an office setup or maybe if you have a guest house or a mother-in-law suite, you can actually arm part of the house on partition one, part of the house on partition two, and each one of you can independently operate both sides of the house without interfering with the other one. Again, that's more of an apartment, studio apartment, uh, secondary room, you could actually do a room in your house, like a bedroom, you could put it on one partition, and only one person will be on, able to arm it, disarm it. That's a whole different subject. I'm not gonna get into, it, into that today. Next button are the three little dots. If you're an Android user, if you're using iPhone, a lot of times you'll see the three dots. You know that's some sort of a special menu. So that brings up an event log menu, a console mode, and a show zones mode. Again, we'll go over all these independently just so you're getting familiar with the home page right now. Bottom right hand side, PHH. So this is a partition description. Again, this has something to do with partitions on your uh, alarm system. You should not need this. If you do need to know how to do this, I would suggest getting with your installer, depending on how he set up the zones and the partitions, to show you how to use that feature. Back to the house button. Bottom right hand side, we've got another exclamation mark with a circle. This actually pulls up troubles on the uh, area. So as you can see here, I've got zone two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight open. I would have one open. I basically have just reset this panel. There's nothing hooked up to it now. So this just shows me what's wrong. So if I had not ready at the top, if I hit that button, it would show me zone two, zone three, whatever zone was open. I can either go look and see if the door window is open or if there's a problem with the contact. If for some reason I want to leave that window open, let's say it was a bedroom window, I could pick on the bedroom window and then I could hit the bypass selected. That would bypass that one zone and actually let me arm the system without interfering with anything else. The other thing I can do is bypass everything. I'd enter my code and that would bypass all those zones until the next morning. Once you disarm the system, all the zones have to be bypassed again, so you have to do them one at a time, or daily, I should say. So let's say you've got a broken sensor and you're waiting on someone to come out. Every day you arm it, you would have to bypass the zone. Once you armed it and disarmed it, it would go back into fault again. You would have to bypass it again. We've got a microphone down here with a circle around it. If you click disarmed. on that. Not ready to arm. It's an audible, basically, so it'll tell you what's wrong with it. So the last one on the bottom is this little media icon. If you click it, there's actually introduction videos, training videos uh, you can do. So if you wanted to do a training video, you could click on that. It would come up and tell you how to arm or disarm your system, how to set up your Wi-Fi, how to do your user code. Basically, most of the stuff I'm showing you here 
it shows you how to do digital picture frame training so it shows you how to do the media card so when you press the settings gear that gives you multiple choice information up here so you can do system information system setup system wi-fi or display and audio setup all right so we're going to start with the obvious one display and audio setup i'm going to enter my code my default code is one two three four whatever your code is, is what you would enter there on the left hand side you can turn the chime on and off uh, you can also turn on the voice mode or voice chime. So if you just wanted to talk to you, you don't want it to ding, you just want to say front door open, you would click on voice mode. Front door open, back door open, whatever zone's open at the time. If you just want chime on, or you want the chime and the voice both on, it'll ding now, and it'll also tell you what's open and what's closed. To turn them off, you simply click on the buttons, and they're turned off. Over on the right-hand side, this is where you would change your language. It's got English and French and Spanish in there. Uh, if you need something else, probably need another keypad. Uh, backlight off after five minutes. So basically after five minutes, it'll start dimming itself. The home page, uh, we'll go back to the home page after two minutes. So let's say if I left it sitting in this screen right here, two minutes later, it's going to go back to the main home page. So you can change that to never 30 seconds, 50 seconds, whichever you want. And the audio slideshow, this goes back to, if you watch lesson one, there's an SD card that goes in the side. You can actually turn on the slideshow so the pictures will start scrolling through um, from your uh, SD card after a certain amount of time. And that way you can have basically a streaming or rolling picture frame. When you're all done here, you either hit the check mark to accept the changes, hit the home key or the back key. I'm going to hit the back key now to get back to the other page. System Wi-Fi, pretty obviously so click on that. And then you can pick your Wi-Fi network, enter your password. That's how you get it online to the Wi-Fi. Back. I'm going to skip system setup for now. System information. This will tell you whether you can enable your remote upgrade, which you want to leave in there. So if they do a software version or, or something like that, it'll actually download the software and update itself. And every now and then, if you have a problem or if you need to call your installer or your monitoring company, they may ask you for this MAC ID and the CRC number. That's what identifies this keypad as being its own. It's basically a social security number for your keypad. I'm going to hit back. And then you've got system setup. Once you get into system setup, this is where you set your time and date. That's pretty obvious. So you click in your time and your date. Click in your time and date. Click on your time and date. One, two, three, four for my code. And then you can change the time, the date, and the year. Or you can get the time. Once you're on the Wi Fi, you can get time and it'll actually pull up the time for you. You check mark when you're done, it saves the settings. CS setup, when you punch in your code, it's not gonna let you in here. The CS setup is for the installer. So if you did one in there, when you punch in 4112 for the installer, this is where you can address the keypad. Uh, you can set the authority for who can get in, who can get out, and you can configure your actual security panel from in here. Um, this is not a user, uh, panel or user interface panel so I'm not going to show you how to do that I might do an installer menu and show you how to do that but for right now the CS setup is not for normal users all right so user setup we're going to click on that the users are basically how many people are in the keypad you can do up to 36 users on a Vista 20 panel uh, user 1 is the installer it starts at 0 2 is the master code I'm telling you that because you're going to need to know that in a second. So I'm going to enter the master code, which is 1234. Once I get in here, now the phase 1, phase 2, and phase 3, if you remember, um, the P1, P2, P3 from lesson 1, those are different phases. So if you have an office building or something like that, you can actually set an office door to lock so people can arm and disarm the rest of the building but not unlock your, um, your one area. I'm not going to go over that right now. Uh, again, that's more for your installer to go over if you set up multiple par partitions. The master code lets you basically do anything and everything, change everything. So normally you don't want to give anyone the master code. You would set up a normal code for somebody. Now the normal code, what you would do is you come in here and enter a digit. So it enters three digits. So the user number would be three in this case. Since we start at two, three, four, five, six, so on, so on and so forth. I hit enter. There's no RF button, there's no key button, so there's not a key fob you're assigning them to, so we don't need to put that in there. I'm gonna give them a name, whatever, close enough for now for the demonstration. And the user code, I'm gonna make it 4321. When I get through with that, I'm gonna hit the OK button. 
and it's saved. So now I've got Reg in there. I should say Greg, but I didn't hit the button right because I'm reaching around the camera to type. So to delete this code, I would basically go up here, hit the X on it, two, three, four, code accepting. Am I sure I want to delete Reg? Yes, I am. Now Reg is gone. So I could add more users now if I wanted to. I'm going to hit the back arrow. And the importance of the user setup is basically if you have more than one person in your house, and unless you're, you know, it's your spouse, if you have a housekeeper, um, people come over to do some work. Let's say you've got to have a plumber in the house and you can't be home from work, but you want to let them in. You've got to sign him a temporary code to get in and out of the house. If you have a monitoring company, the monitoring company can actually tell user two, user three, user four, armed or disarmed your system. So you would know who was in, who was out. And they can also delete it when they're done. So the last thing we need to go over in here is the advanced setup. We click on that, enter our code. Once we get in the advanced setup, this is your power mode setup. So basically you can turn on power savings. Um, it'll go to sleep faster, your night setup. Um, when you push night, like when you're arming the system, you can set this up to do different things. So you can set the night mode to just do stay or away. You could do instant or you can do maximum. Maximum arms everything in the house, including the motion sensors. Instant will put you in a stay mode, but leave the, the uh, inside motions alone. Uh, most of the time, don't want to mess with the setting, but that's what it's there for. And keypad reset basically defaults all the settings back to normal. We don't want to hit that right now. So why you'd want to put this feature in here, I'm not sure, but anyhow, I'll go over it. So as I just explained in lesson one, you go, you've got to use a memory card. So it doesn't come with an SD card. You have to use a micro SD card, which is a small one. It's recommended to use an eight gigabyte SD card, which is really small, but if you're only putting pictures on there, it's not going to matter. So when you click on this file, once you put in your card, and again, this has to be saved as a PNG file. Um, if you've got pictures that are saved and they're not PNG format, if you pull them up in like Microsoft Paint, you can save them as a PNG, download them to the memory card and put them in here. But it's a pain in the butt to transfer back and forth. There's no way to Wi-Fi connect to it. You can't just transfer files back and forth. Um, hopefully one day they'll get caught up on their technology, but right now they're not. Either way, when we click on this, this is the few pictures I just saved off the internet. So this is what's in my folder right now. When I hit the play button, this is basically what it would look like on your screen. So if this is on your wall and you got your family photos in there, this is what would pan through over and over and over. So to turn this feature on, this was in lesson two. If we hit the settings gear, we go into the display and audio, enter our code. Once we get in here, on the bottom right hand side, it'll say Start Slideshow. So I'll put the Start Slideshow after 30 seconds. I want to make sure I hit the check mark button, so I save it. It should say Information Saved on there. I want to hit the Home key, and then we're going to wait patiently for 30 seconds. So basically after your 30 seconds, that's what your keypad will do, except for it'll be photos of your family or whatever you want to put on there. Tap the home screen, comes back up to the home page. To turn that feature off, same thing, you hit the gear, display audio, your code, and then we'll just go down here and hit never again. Or if you want to do five minutes or three minutes or whatever you want. I'm gonna hit the home key, Today's lesson is going to be on this bottom left hand icon, which is an exclamation mark with a triangle and a circle around it. This is a pretty fast and easy lesson. This is a panic button. Now, depending on how the installer's got this program, you might have silent panic, audible panic. Uh, you can have an emergency button set up on here. But basically what you do is you press and hold the button. It solves off the panic, sends out a signal to the monitoring company. It never makes a noise inside the house. Um, if you've got the audible panic on, Basically, it will set up the alarm inside the house if the siren's going off inside the house, and it will also call the monitoring company. So this lesson will be fast and easy. Uh, since we're not going to get into this too much, again, whoever puts in your security panel on these partitions should explain to you how to use these partitions. But again, this is more for an office building or somewhere where, let's say you have an office in the front and a warehouse in the back. You want the people to be able to get in the warehouse, but you don't want them to be able to get in the office. You create multiple partitions. The master code, if you set it up in the user setting, 
will basically allow the master to arm and disarm both partitions at the same time or the front and the back of the building. Or you can give your installers or somebody that needs in the back a certain code. It's only going to unlock the back of the building. If your office personnel would get another code that could unlock the front of the building. So when you click on that button, that's all this does. So when you go into arm away, stay night, it does the same thing as it would if you're arming the system by yourself. So let's say we hit arm away. It's going to ask you for your code. If your code is a master code and you can arm both partitions, it's going to arm both partitions. If you're a user that can only get to the back of the building, it would only unlock the back of the building or arm the back of the building. You get the picture. So basically, fast and easy works almost exactly like the regular arming and disarming, except for you don't have to do that. So we have the three little dots over here. This is going to take us to three different sections to get to. I'm going to go over the fast and easiest one first. That's the show zones. When you click on the show zones, it's basically going to show us anything that's open or we have a problem with it. So if we've got a problem with the console or something like that, or let's say we've got a zone open, this will let you get in and figure out, uh, once this is programmed, if your installer does it right, it shouldn't say zone 5, it should say like master bedroom or kitchen or dining room. If for some reason you know for a fact that's supposed to be open, let's say that's a, that's a master bedroom window. When you click on that, you can hit bypass. It's going to ask you for your code. You can punch in your code, and basically that will take that zone out of there. So we hit show zones again. And that zone's not going to be in there anymore because it's bypassed. It's got a little tiny icon up there that changes. And that way you can actually leave the bedroom window open all night long and arm and disarm the system. Once you arm the system and disarm the system, it goes right back into trouble again. So you have to bypass that zone every time you want to do it. So if there's a problem with your sensor, it's defective, or you need someone to look at it, you can bypass it until your installer can get there. All right, so the next thing in here is the event log. So we're going to click on the event log. This is basically going to not help you at all. This will help your installer out. So if you're having problems with your system, the installer may ask you or the service company may ask you to pull up this event log and they're going to ask you for these letters and numbers over here. They can tell by the letters and the numbers what happened to the system. Again, not going to help you out much, but that's what it's there for. Console mode. When you click on the console mode, this is going to take you back to an old school keypad. So it's going to look basically like an old 62 or 6160, 6150, 6148. And this is going to let you punch in the numbers like you used to. So if you used to hit 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 for off, or if you had the buttons on the side like stay away, you can hit those buttons from over here. For the most part, as a user, you don't need into that because you can change your time, change your date, add the codes, add the users, change the master codes, all from that other menu. Um, so you really don't need to get into that at all. But if for some reason, someone would ask you to get into there to make changes. Uh, if you're an installer, this is a good way to program your system. That way you don't have to actually uh, grab a 6160 keypad out or something like that. You can go into here and program through that also. Back out of here. Back out of here. P1H button. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to put in my master code. Now what this does is it takes you into your partitions, lets you know if each partition is ready or not. Now the, this particular panel will do three partitions. So basically if you had... Uh, most people don't use three partitions. If anything, you have an office building where, let's say, you've got a service center or a garage in the back. You could actually create a partition tube to let people in the back of the warehouse without letting them into the office area. So you would give your front office people one code, the back people another code, and then you as the owner would keep your master code so you could disarm both partitions at the same time. That's all that's there for. So we'll let you know whether it's ready or not ready. Now, while you're in here, as you can see by partition one is not ready, that's because the panel's not hooked up to anything. There's just a bunch of empty terminals there. Partition two and partition three are there. They're ready to arm. They're not programmed either. I don't have anything on this partition, so there's nothing there so you could arm them. If you wanted to, you could click on individual partitions. So let's say that you were trying to set your arm in your warehouse wouldn't arm. It was on partition two. You would hit that. When you hit the OK button, it would take you into that partition. Sorry, I already hit that. So it takes me to partition three. So now I know I'm in partition three. Once I'm in here, I could hit the three dots, hit the show zones, and it would show me what zones were open in that partition. Again, there's nothing in that partition, so there's nothing there to show open or, or uh, defective. Back to here, I'm going to go back to the P3. I'm going to put it in my code again. And I'm going to go back to partition one. Again, for the most part, most of you don't have to mess with that at all. That's more for business or commercial application than it is residential. This button down here at the bottom right, when I click on it... Disarmed. Not. Ready to arm. Zone. Bypassed. 
all that is is a status button. It tells you what's going on with the panel. It tells me I'm not ready to arm and I've got something bypassed. It will not tell you what's open or what's closed. If you have an open issue, you would have to hit the three dots, show the zones, and it would show you what was open. It does show the bypass zone, which doesn't make any sense why it wouldn't tell you what was open, but it does show the bypass zone, which we bypassed in an earlier lesson. But either way, you could bypass everything that you had problems with, or again, if you have a problem with uh, something you need an installer to come fix, you could bypass it temporarily. Back to the home page, click on the house, this little button right here. When I click on that, it comes up with training videos and introduction video. Introduction video is basically the video that comes up when you first buy the system. When you plug it in, turn it on, it comes up with that video. Don't know why you'd want to watch it again, but it's in there if you do. Training videos, pretty obvious. Shows you how to control the brightness, chime turning on, turning off, user code management. Basically it goes over quick training on how to turn things on and off. So if you click on the chime button, it's gonna come up, play your audio, show you which buttons to set or push, to change all the things I'm showing you how to do anyhow. And it makes you do them step by step. I'm gonna go back to the house. But the last thing you need to know as a user is basically arm away, arm stay, arm night, and disarm. So the arm away button, you press that when you're leaving the house for the day or for, um, let's say vacation or something. The difference between arm stay and arm away, two main differences is the arm away gives you an audible exit. So it beeps at you while you're exiting the house. The arm stay button gives you the same delay time to get out of the house, but it doesn't beep at you. So if you hit the arm away button and actually don't leave your house, the panel is set to default unless your installer changed it to go into stay mode because it doesn't think you opened and closed the door so it thinks you're still in the house. So it will go to stay mode if you hit arm away and don't leave the house. Arming the away button will enable the motion sensors inside the house and anything else set to um, program that way. So you can actually program a door to be armed away mode or arm stay mode so it wouldn't arm or disarm. Mostly that's set up for motion sensors. When you hit the arm stay button, again, same way, the motion sensors are disabled so you can walk around the inside of the house but your perimeter is still set. Now, if you've got an area like an office or something like that, you could still program one of those motion sensors to be triggered while the alarm is in stay mode. So make sure you talk to your installer when you set it up, you set it up correctly. Arm night was in that other menu I showed you on one of the other videos. You can set arm night up for different ways. So you can set the arm night up for a stay mode, away mode, or you can actually configure it so it goes like instant or maximum. So if you set the arm night button to instant, basically there's no delay in or no delay out. Once you set the alarm, it's set. So if somebody comes through the door, even though you've got a delay on the door, the alarm goes off. That's basically when you're home at night, going to bed, and you know for a fact no one's gonna open the door. Now I tell most of my customers not to use that, especially if they have pets. If you have pets and you go to let the dog out or something in the middle of the night, you can open the door, the alarm goes off instantly. There's no time to turn off the alarm before the siren goes off. Uh, disarm is pretty obvious. When you come in, if the alarm you know, is going off or beeping at you, it's going to come up and say disarm. Or let's say you hit arm stay, and then you're going to let the dog out. You forgot something. Crap, I need to turn off the alarm. You would hit disarm and turn it off. My alarm is not going to arm because I've got all the wires off of it. Basically, I've just got the keypad powered up right now. But if it was in arming or beeping at you, you could disarm it and turn it off before it actually got to the arm part. Anyhow, that's it for this lesson. I uh, hope everybody enjoyed the video. Please click on like and subscribe.